Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. My name is Louise Collin. And I'm David M. Harris. We hope you'll enjoy the poems we'll be reading today, poems written by your friends and neighbors. Labor of Love by Viraja R. Dig deep into the soil, the soul, bringing out the miracle of life and sustenance. Knowledge by Samuel Blanchett. This poem was written when he was in the eighth grade. The primal state, knowledge will make life harder. If you believe otherwise, imagine a life with no knowledge. The people performing miracles and the people who make the world hell. All their actions would not be known. We would never know sadness, is what some might say. But to them I say, if you didn't know sadness, you wouldn't know happiness. We would just know a dull, everlasting void. Even if you could somehow know happiness from ignorance, you would be so ignorant as to not understand what happiness was. We may occasionally have a thought, but we wouldn't know what to do with that thought. We would constantly make mistakes that even the lowliest of humans could see was possibly the worst thing ever. There would be no consequences, and with no consequences there would be no rule, and with no rule no one would be alive. Or, if you wish, you may imagine the other option for a world without knowledge, and imagine a world with nothing. Nothing would exist, because it wouldn't know how to. I have recently been writing poems in the form of letters, and some of those letters are to people to whom I cannot send them, and those are listed as the Dead Letter Office poems. So this one is Dead Letter Office, Vincent Gigante. Dear Mr. Gigante, I don't believe in villains. Maybe you were the boss of all bosses, as the feds claimed, but you had a family to care for, a big family, and they prospered when you were the godfather. Your tribe was not Judah, but David might have been your model. He was the better poet, killed more than you, and seized control of the histories. You shambled around our neighborhood in a bathrobe, half convinced the world you were mad, mumbled a word in someone's ear, and things happened. According to the feds, Put Uriah in front where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw. Our neighborhood was safe and the cost was paid by others, Philistines, as quiet as David's Jerusalem. In his time, you would have been a legend. Your biggest crime was being born too late. Warrior Goddess by Kara Ermey. I am a warrior goddess. See me defend the earth, battle litter, go to war with pollution, create an army of tree huggers, fence in the garden, guard my land, protect the borders. I am a warrior for Mother Earth. She gave me birth, raise me to be a goddess. No one will take her down around here. Another poem of mine. We learn who we are from the movies. On clear nights, we could see the drive-in screen, watch the distant images step and glide through the picture window of the living room. Gene Kelly tapped and leaped in silence, drove me to dance lessons. When I took up cigarettes, Bogart taught me how to look manly with them or in a trench coat, years before I realized I could own one. I tapped, and then I didn't. I smoked, and then I didn't. I wore a trench coat, and now I don't know where it went. John Wayne for cowboy swagger, Cary Grant for suave charm, Fred Astaire for easy grace. None of the disguises ever fit quite right. It was a very good vacation by Mary Lane. There's a big lump on Mike, unidentified bite, 
and Daddy's poor back is a mess. Jane played for some time near a lovely green vine. It was poison ivy, we guess. Mama was wise to that sunburning jive. Her protection routine was the best, but she's nervous and wan for nursing a gang in need of a long, quiet rest. Today, we limped home with our money all gone. We're weary and sore to the touch. In a quizzical vein, it's amazing we can enjoy such suffering so much. Thank you for watching Poets from the Neighborhood. We hope you'll join us again soon.